So uh, thank you all. Uh, again, my name is Don Griffin. Uh, something you might not necessarily know about me by looking at me is I was on the almost seven year plan to get my undergraduate degree. Uh, so, <laughs> you know, and, and that's one of the things that I like that I'm encouraged about with uh, this coming year with uh, Gordon as the RI president and talking about mental health and talking about maybe meeting people about where, where they're at. So to give you a little bit more background about myself, I'm in my fourth Rotary Club and my fifth Rotary District. I have seen a lot of Rotary. My first Rotary Club in the 2011-2012 Rotary year was recognized as one of the top five clubs internationally for the Rotary President's for Citation. I'm a past president of the Rotary E Club of the Southwest USA. I served more than a full term. And when I started my second, the second term, I thought I was going to have to turn in my club charter at the end of my term. So I know what's, what it's like at one end of the scale, and I know what it's like at the other end of the scale. So when I looked, when two years ago, I was given the opportunity to be your district governor, I was looking around, what's this district about? And yes, we look at our membership numbers, and they've been slowly declining year after year after year. But on the flip side of it, our foundation giving has been going up and up and up. You know, I I don't I don't understand how that works. I'm grateful that that works. You know, it's it's those um, the annual fund giving that's important to giving that. And right, I looked at the numbers this morning, and we're down a little bit from that trajectory. So I'm going to put a little, a little plug. If you've not done your annual fund giving, please do so. The money that you come put in now, half of that's going to come back for district grants during Liz's uh, time as district governor. So you're making an investment today in, in that future. So, and um, the, the other thing to think about is that only one in 12 members are currently giving to the polio campaign. Fewer than one in five clubs are giving to polio. Rob is doing a bang up job and trying to get out there and get the message out and, and doing it. Um, also, 60% of Rotarians worldwide are not giving to the foundation. Let's work together to make the Rotary Foundation the preferred charity choice for our members. So at, at PES, I commented that COVID kind of took the wind out of our sails. And we're trying to figure out how are we going to regroup? And what I talked about in the budget, that I wanted to get back to our areas of focus, our avenues of service, the object of rotary. Those are our core fundamentals. And when I was looking, faced with the possibility of having to turn in my club charter, I read, read back to one of the books that I'd read uh, by Greg McGowan on essentialism. Essentialism is not about getting, not how to get more things done. It's about how to do things right. So let's focus on what we are. And fortunately, we don't have to think about how do we do that. Rotary has the action plan for us to do that. Two key things that I want us to focus on this next year is increase our impact. What are we doing in our communities, in our in the wrong world, and in ourselves? What do we want our legacy to be? How will we define and measure our impact? How will we do more good in the world? That's one of Rotary's action uh, plan statements. The other part is expanding our reach. How do we share our values with a new audience? That doesn't necessarily mean getting them in and signing them up as members. 
It's holding positive peace seminars. It's inviting them to uh, uh, in-person uh, diversity and equity and inclusion events that we're going to be hosting in, in, in the summer or in the fall. So let people know that we are people of integrity of, and what, what our values are, our four-way test. Let, them, let us show uh, another way of going. Uh, positive peace was talked about. I learned about positive peace at the end of my uh, time as club president. And up until that point, it's like, I couldn't understand. Because we often think of peace as the absence of conflict. But positive peace is measurable. The, uh, there's an institute out there that will, does a global peace index every year based upon 140 some measurable data points. There's eight pillars of positive peace. There's the Rotary Peace Academy. There's a peace activator that's gonna be speaking tomorrow on, on positive peace. Go and go and learn about that. So let's, that's how we can expand our reach. Mike's been going around in his club visits talking about doing small scale service projects. And we are going to formalize it. And I'm going to twist the focus because the focus is road rotary to service. Well, let's do service to improve our impact, to expand our reach. If we are providing opportunities membership will grow but I, i've been in, i've been in rotary since 2007 we've been harping we got to get members in we got to get members in it's not working so let's not focus on getting people in the door let's focus on keeping the people that we have engaged and having that impact to create lasting change in our communities, and more importantly, in ourselves, because it's, it's this rural service projects that I do with, you know, I was flipping pancakes for, for with my club. Just that time and seeing the kids having fun, you know, that brings value to me. That brings joy to my life. So uh, I'm, I'm grateful to say that Kathy Christensen is transitioning from membership to being the spearhead for community services. And uh, we're going to be pushing that out a lot more. One of the other things that, I'm, that I uh, encourage the incoming presidents to do is a Rotary Day of Hope. We have, we're fortunate that this year we have 366 days because of leap year. So we've got this extra day. So let's use that extra day to create hope in the world. It can be any avenue of service. It can be any area of focus, just something new, something that you have not tried before with a partner. You know, and I would actually encourage you, find a partner that you can do that with. We don't need to have all the expertise in-house. Partnerships are what, what makes things go. So to encourage the club presidents, I'm also doing a governor citation. And it, it's around the, the goals. Now, I list, gave, 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 President, the criteria, and they need to get 250 points. On there, there's more than 440 points possible because some of the points that are available are based upon number of members. So if you get two members, three members, four members, those points add up really quick. So in two, one of those aspects of points is there's Again, the Rotary Peace Academy. For each member that completes the Rotary Peace Academy is worth two points towards the governor's citation. I would love it if I give every club in the district the governor's citation. I, and that's really what I want to know. Um, Mike mentioned greater AG support. I want to thank 
Liz and Pete for the hours we spent first agreeing on what did we want our AGs to do, and then coming up with what's a reasonable amount of time. So we're growing from 14 areas to 16 areas, but and no AG is going to have more than four clubs to support. That way we can have the each club get the support from their AGs. But we're also and we're also going to have the committees working much more closely with the AGs, communicating with them. Another change uh, that I discussed with the, the district governors yesterday is changing slash relaxing our email policy to, to give club chairs greater ability to communicate with their members and communicate with, with the club leaders and the district at large. Details on that is going to, are, will be coming out before the beginning of the year. Another uh, changes on the website. I'm going to have a space that I'm going to be putting stuff out there. Kind of think of it as a newsletter, the little bitty stories. I'm borrowing what I used to do with President of the E Club. Also, all of the major committees, foundation, membership, community service, youth, they're also going to have their own little pages and putting stuff out there. We want, we're redesigning the website so that you go to that as a point of information. Because um, we're all inundated with emails and messages and stuff. So we want to try and make it easier for you to understand what's going on. The, the, the best thing that I like about uh, what, Rory, what Gordon's been talking about is his emphasis on mental health. And, you know, we are in a, a society right now is not in a good space. Some members are not necessarily in a good space. We need to make sure that we're taking care of each other. In February, I had I was I was in a bad space. I was able to lean on this uh, other leaders in the district to take up the slack while I was able to step back, deal with my issues, and move forward. So what I encourage you to walk up to your members. Look them in the eye and say, how are you? No, really, how are you? Because it's the, you know, that's how we create hope. That's how we make that personal connection. And the, the, I want to end with a quote from one of my other favorite authors, Dr. Brene Brown. No matter what gets done, how much is left undone, I am enough. We are all volunteers. We do this for the, the little aha moments, the little bits of joy. And we all need to make sure that we're covering each other and have everybody's back. The flip side of it is we need to make sure that we don't lose the, the well, we're all volunteers to let people not do work. But, you know, that's a tough balance. I don't have the balance in my own life to figure that out. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you how to do that. But we are only, I think, working together, we can find that. So I'm looking forward to this next year, visiting your clubs, uh, working to grow Rotary and creating hope in the world.